I wonder what you'd say you're living for. It's a question that I'm sure everyone has asked themselves in the past weeks. Can you solely be living for your career when you, you can't go to work? When your sports team can't play, what happens then? Does everything hinge on going out on the weekend? Well, what happens when you have to stay inside? Everyone has had a big part of their lives taken away from them. But this evening, we're going to look at something, someone in fact, worth living for. The person of Jesus has come to earth to save people like you and me. He can be known today. And you don't have to go anywhere to know the good news of Jesus. Over the next few minutes, we're going to explore this amazing news of the only person worth living for. As Jasmine read to us earlier, we're going to be exploring a passage in the book of Romans. This book was written by a guy called Paul, who was a follower of Jesus. And he was writing a letter to a church in Rome. And he walks us through the foundation of the Christian hope. And he unpacks why Jesus died. In this passage, Paul talks about the past, the present, and the future of the Christian hope. The past is secure, the present is full of peace, and the future is glorious for the Christian. And we're going to first look at the past. In verses 6 to 8 of our passage, we see past justification. And don't worry about that big word. We're going to explain more of it later. It says this. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Paul takes us back to Good Friday, to the crucifixion. Jesus has, had been arrested, he'd been put on trial, he'd been beaten, whipped, spat upon, a crown of thorns placed on his head. And we read this in Luke's biography of Jesus' life. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. We read that Jesus died on a Roman cross. But Paul says that there's more going on here. Jesus didn't just die. In our passage in verse 6, we read that Christ that Jesus died for the ungodly. And previously, Paul has explained that we are the ungodly. We may think that we're good people, that we do good things. But you know, we can never do enough to reach God's standards. His standard is good and it's perfect. And we all fall short of it. It's the condition of the human heart that we want to be king of our own lives. We want to do whatever we want, whenever we want to do it. We ignore God's and we do our own thing. That's what the Bible calls sin. We can't do anything to work our way to God's. We are all far from God's and we're in need of a rescue. The good news is that this has come in the person of Jesus. In verse 8, we see that God loves us. But he demonstrates that in the most amazing way. He shows us that he loves us by sending Jesus, his son, to die in our place, to die for our sin. It says this, let's read it in verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God loves us so much that he sent his son, Jesus, to die for us. God didn't wait for us to do some good things, 
He knows that we could never do enough. So while we were still sinners, while we were God's haters, while we were shaking our fist at God's, going our own way, God shows us his love for you and for me by Jesus taking the punishment that we deserve. As humans, we find it difficult to love people. We find it even more difficult to love people we know don't like us. But God loved us, loved you, when we pretended that he didn't exist. When we blame him for everything that goes wrong. When we just try and be good enough. That's when Jesus died for us. To justify us. That means to make us right with God. Just if I had never sinned. To bring us into a relationship with the creator of the world. This is what is achieved at the cross. This swap where Jesus' perfectness is exchanged for our sinfulness. This is why the cross is so important. This is the rescue that we are in so much need of. Jesus' death on the cross that we remember today on Good Friday, it it puts a life-changing offer on the table. That cross of 2,000 years ago the death of Jesus, where opens a way for us to come to God. Jesus is the only way that we can come to God. Not by doing good deeds or church attendance or just trying not to swear. Jesus, the Son of God, crucified on that cross, opens a way for us to come into a relationship with God. This amazing truth of the cross is truly life-changing. Paul explains the past events, but he also talks about the present. Paul talks about what the work of the cross 2,000 years ago means in the present. He says this in verses 3 and 4, jumping back a bit. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. Well, he says that the present and the future and the past are all intertwined. If we're trusting in Jesus, then we're living in the grace that God has shown us. So we see living in present grace, in verses 3 to 5. But between now and the future, what characterises the Christian life? Well, Paul says that it's suffering. This is the pattern of the Lord Jesus. We see him suffer. And this is the pattern for his followers too. We see this all around, don't we? Persecution, war, Sickness, natural disaster, crime, disease, death. But Paul says to glory in, to to boast in our sufferings, to rejoice in them. This suffering, Paul says, produces perseverance. Paul says enduring the suffering builds this quality within us, this patient endurance that only comes through suffering. Perseverance, verse 4, produces character. This testing of our character only comes through suffering. And Paul goes on to say that this character produces hope. How can this be possible? What hope do we have? Saved by a crucified saviour on a Roman cross. Suffering in the present, well, what can we hope for? Well, sometimes for the Christian, it can be easy to say, oh, I've got hope for the future. I know that we are promised to be with Christ for eternity. But only after suffering do we cling to that hope. 
with every fibre of our being because we've got nothing left to hold on to. Paul says we need to fix our eyes on the future glory that awaits those who trust in Jesus. We live in the light of past justification, living in the present grace as a gift from God, enduring suffering, eyes fixed on that day when we will see Jesus face to face and we will be with him in eternity forever. But what is this future glory that we can hope in? Well, Paul goes on in his letter and from verses 9 to 11, he explains the future glory. And that's our third point this evening, future glory. God has made a legal declaration that we are justified. The opposite of being condemned. That's what we saw at the beginning, that we are certain that the wrath of God that will come on that final day, it's not going to fall on those who are trusting in Jesus because it fell on Jesus at the cross where he died. Let's read verse 10. It says, For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? We see that we get a reinforcement of the power of the cross, of what we looked at earlier in verse 8. Even though we are sinful, we are reconciled to God through Jesus. Well, what does this reconciled word mean? Well, it means to restore relationship. Because of our sin, we are cut off from God. God is so holy that no sin can be in his presence. Well, then how can we know God? We need our sin to be removed. This is what the cross of Christ accomplishes. That is what Jesus achieves by hanging on a tree, dying for you, for those he loves. He takes our sin as his own and leaves us spotless so that that sin barrier can be removed between us and God. We can come into his presence. We can know God. That relationship has been restored through Jesus. We have been reconciled. Notice how in verse 10, Paul says at the end of the verse, having been reconciled, shall we be saved? This future promise. We are saved now in the present, living in the grace of God. But there is still sin in this world. We still disobey God. We try to be king of our own lives. But the Bible says that there will be a day where sin will be destroyed forever. Our crucified Messiah will return and on that day we will be fully restored and we, we will be with Jesus for eternity. This is the future glory that Paul is speaking of. When we die and stand before Jesus, do we want to have known him, to have been in relationship with him? Or do we want him to say, I never knew you? This is the hope of the Christian, that we will be with Jesus forever. This is why the Christian can endure suffering joyfully. Well, what does this mean for us today? Sitting on our sofas or our dining room tables across this country, across the world. What does this mean? Well, if we're trusting in Jesus today, then it means our past is secure and our future is guaranteed. Imagine you're walking along a rope bridge over a deep ravine. The wind is howling. The rain is coming down. The bridge swaying from side to side. But you know that it won't break because it is totally secure at either end. It's unbreakably tied to the past justification on one side. 
and is totally secured to the future glory on the other side. We may be suffering in the present. The storm may be howling, but we see what happens at the cross means that Jesus is the only security in life. So what are you living for? Is it going to stand up in the storm of life? Is it secure? As we read this today, we remember what Jesus has done. We see that Jesus is the only true security we have in life. We can be made right with God through Jesus dying on a cross for you and for me. He died for you. And we will celebrate on Easter Sunday his glorious resurrection as he conquers death and sin and he rises from the grave. King Jesus is the rock that we can build our lives upon. If you don't know Jesus this evening, and if you want to find out more, well, send us an email. Give us a call. We'd love to chat these things through with you. We have a great hope this evening. A hope made secure in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ.